Comes to John Birdie in the stolen bases this year, leading the National League. Birdie's gonna steal. And there goes Birdie. Birdie just continues to run and he gets great jumps and he's very successful when he does swipe that bag. Watch Birdie, little hop, little hop, and then he goes. Another stolen base for John Birdie. He's flying. He makes the best of all of his opportunities. Oh, you've got to love the way John Birdie plays this game. And John Birdie has set a Marlins record with 21 consecutive successful stolen base attempts. Well, we've talked about this game a couple of times already tonight. The Marlins and Cardinals at Bush Stadium. Entity ballpark cam is fired up there. Major League Baseball stolen base leader. Miami Marlin John Birdie joins us for a visit on the spread tonight. John, Matt Vaskersian here. Thanks for coming on the program. Good to have you. Thanks for having me. Hey, let's talk about the stolen bases because that's the narrative around your season right now. Uh, north of 30, man. I don't know if you heard this, but that's when we're all supposed to get <laughs> slower. But you're running more and more. Talk about that part of your game. Yeah, um, obviously it's a big part of my game. And so uh, I do the best I can to take care of my body and, um, you know, make sure that as I get older that I don't get uh, don't lose a step or two. Have your base stealing instincts gotten better or is it a matter of being on base more frequently with a green light? I think it's a uh, part of all of it, you know, um, being on base obviously helps can't steal first base, but um, having the instincts and the more you play, the more you get into a rhythm with it. And um, honestly, our first base coach, Keith Johnson, does a um, phenomenal job for us uh, with video and different things. So um, when we do get out there on first base, it feels like we've been out there already. I don't want to get too personal with contract stuff. Uh, however, we hear about these contracts where guys have bonuses or escalators if they lead a league in a certain category. <laughs> Do they break you off for an extra 10 mil or something if you lead the league in bags at the end of the year? Not that I know of, but that would be a uh, pleasant surprise, that's for sure. Right. <laughs> we'll work on that. Hey, I want to ask you, too, about the defensive component to your game this year because you for some time were a uh, bring a handful of gloves to the ballpark player and then you're plugged in wherever you're needed. Uh, maybe only one or two gloves these days uh, settling in at third base. Talk about that. Yeah I mean I take a lot of pride in, in being able to play over the field and um, you know whatever Donnie needs for me uh, that day I'm going to do my best to, to out there and make plays for our pitcher and and get out and whether that's third base second base anywhere in the outfield shortstop um, whatever I got to do is it's what I'm going to do. So you don't have a, a preference I would imagine in that regard if I'm hearing you right. Um, no, um, obviously the more you play one spot the more comfortable you feel um, but uh, honestly at this point. Uh, I've gotten comfortable all over the place so it's just about getting reps. Let's talk a little bit about your kind of career trajectory because it's really it's such a great story and, and um, I, I mean don't get me wrong in, in calling you a late bloomer um, I think that's <laughs> probably accurate. Would you agree with that. Yeah I mean obviously didn't get to the big leagues until I was 28 uh, would have loved to have gotten here sooner but um, it worked out how it did and I really wouldn't change my journey for anything. Yeah drafted by the A's uh, decided to play in college instead. Um, some time with the Toronto Blue Jays. Do you ever get caught up wondering what if what if you'd stayed uh, in Toronto. What if you'd signed with Oakland. Um, honestly not really maybe at the end of my career maybe I'll look back on certain things and, and wonder what if but honestly I'm really happy here in Miami and uh, have gotten an opportunity here and, and doing what I can to make the most of it. Guy on the mound for you tonight uh, Sandy Alcantara has everybody's attention. He is no longer a secret or a quiet commodity. Talk about what it's like playing behind him when he's on the mound. Uh, love playing behind Sandy can't say enough about him. He's he's a bulldog man. He goes out there. He wants to pitch all nine. He competes from the first pitch to the last and um, definitely keeps you more engaged on defense and um, you definitely want to make the place for him because you know how hard he's working up there for you. So as a guy uh, for you from uh, from Michigan who still makes his offseason home in Michigan did you grow up a Tigers fan and is it weird when you get to the big leagues and you play against the team that you grew up watching. Yeah I grew up uh, a Tigers fan and, and honestly a little bit of a, unfortunately a Braves fan um, just from watching them on TBS too so um, pretty cool though with uh, Marcus Timms being our hitting coach and um, growing up watching him and sharing some stories about those teams that he was on in the early 2000s. So um, that was a pretty cool experience. Did you ever get to play it maybe as an amateur or in any capacity at old Tiger Stadium. 
No, I didn't. I, I went to several games uh, growing up as a kid until I think Comerica came around in around 2000. Um, but yeah, growing up, I still remember going to some games with my dad and my brothers and um, never played on that field, but uh, played on Comerica. So uh, I'll take that. So that leads me to my next question. What is your favorite ballpark to play in in the majors? Um, probably two of them. I really do enjoy uh, hitting at home at Lone Depot. I feel like I see the ball pretty well there, but um, honestly, I have a lot of good memories at Wrigley Field. Um, hit my first home run there, and um, with all the history that they got there, it's it's pretty special anytime you get a chance to play there. You're in the uh, the land of Ted Drew's frozen custard and uh, and fried ravioli in St. Louis, so we have to ask you some food questions here. Uh, okay. Among your stops in the big leagues, you, you played for the Toronto Blue Jays. Yay or nay on poutine? Yay. I would yay. Say yay. I mean, not how something do you I would, not? not? Yeah, not something I would eat every day, but uh, definitely whenever you know I get a chance to get back in Canada, uh, it's one of the first things I eat. Yeah, not as a professional athlete. If you're on this side of it, <laughs> you, you know, just an tur old turd like me, you can eat as many gravy fries <laughs> as possible. Um, you played in Australia one summer, we understand. What was the best thing that you ate when you played and lived in Australia? Um, I'll go out on a limb and just say the, the weirdest thing I ate was I did try kangaroo. Um, it, was, it was definitely not for me, but um, you got to cook it the right way, apparently. And we had a host family over there that uh, said we had to try it just for being out there. But um, other than that, you know, they love their Vegemite, which I'll never understand. But uh, you know, so I think those are the two things that kind of stick out the most when went over there. Dude, they give you a lot of credit for trying it. And I don't care how you cook <laughs> it, man. It's Pasadena on the kangaroo for me. Team dinner with the Marlins. Who's grabbing the check? Uh, who's grabbing the check? I think uh, I think Sandy would pick it up. Oh, OK. All right, guy that hasn't even uh, hit the jackpot yet. That's pretty cool to hear. All right, and, and here's the showstopper here. Who is the biggest spread crusher on the Miami Marlins? <laughs> Uh, he's gonna probably kill me for this one, but Richard Blyer, I think uh, he can he can put some food away. Dude, big guys got to eat, man. It's it's not a knock on your physique, just got to fuel the machine. <laughs> I get it, I get it, John. We appreciate yep. the visit, man. Nice visiting with you. Congrats on such a great start to the season. We love watching you play, and good luck tonight against the Redbirds. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me.